other questions. I thought I guess I've given more work to do, but apparently not. Yeah. Uh, just a bit of a highlight concerning with your coursework. Um, there is one test and one assignment, right? And the assignment, you might need one graph paper, okay, to complete it. But considering it is an assignment, it will be, you know, several days or even one week for you to complete the assignment. Um, so you have time to prepare the graph paper. You only want, need one piece for that matter. Um, it will be issued on week 11. Okay. And it will cover from chapter two to chapter five. Yes. Um, for your test will be on week nine, if I'm not mistaken, we'll cover from chapter one to chapter four. And there are no graph paper required. I think I've mentioned that to you yesterday. Yeah, there are six questions, um, but the assignment you have seven questions. Yeah. So the you might be wondering how the format of the questions on the test and on the assignment it is similar to the final uh, final exam questions. Yeah. I'm not sure whether I've shared some past question to you guys yet, which I think I have not, but I have to check on the Google Classroom. And um, what else? Huh? I remember to tell you guys. Um, any question? Just in case your question might remind me of something. So far, okay. All right, so if if not, if no question. Oh, Farrah, you're here already. That's good. Uh, yeah, I got uh, one thirty. I can't hear you, Farrah. You were, you're having lunch? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I thought the class is one thirty just now. Oh, it, it, it is one o'clock, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So after, after my class, do you have class at 2.30? Uh, I think got good class after this lah. Oh, you all don't have not remember your timetable yet, is it? Uh the time only lah, but got class lah. Oh, got class. Mm, yeah lah. I cannot imagine how you guys, you know. I have five subjects, so you know my time I spend more than five, you know, more than the five subjects because I have to do preparation, the test question, assignment, all the paperwork. I think I spend too much time on the PC. But I think students, lagi lah, you have, you have to spend so much time in front of the PC. But anyhow, yeah, um, you guys must find a way to have a break, yeah? So um, let's discuss the question that I've asked you to do. So uh, I managed to prepare uh, a PowerPoint slide this time concerning with the tutorial. So I will not be using Jamboard like what I've done previously, of which my handwriting is totally bad. So let us discuss, uh, first of all, the question number two, yes? So I only ask you to do the even numbers, right? Question two, four, six, and eight. Yeah, so this is the first one. And the experiment is about the dice are thrown. Now you might have noticed that um, the questions tend to use the word ordinary dice. This is in reference to ordinary dice having numbers one two three four five and six on the dice so that is what it's termed as ordinary and the first question is to find the sum of the two dice is a three yeah um now take note two ordinary dice when they are thrown what we're looking at in question a 
is that we want to find out the sum of the two dice. So same thing with B, sum of the two dice, but an extra condition, it exceeds the value of nine. And C, the two dice shows the same number. And D, the numbers on the two dice differ by more than two. So in order to solve this, you can see at the side here, these are the answer, yeah? Uh, provided as a guideline to all of you. So in order to solve this, the first thing we need to do is, any ideas, class? What's the first thing we need to do here? List. Huh? List out the, num the possibilities. Yeah. So the first thing is to list out everything. I didn't write the whole thing. Um, what I'm sharing with you is the requirement but um, in a sense, this is what needed to be shown when you are answering the question. Okay. okay. Can, we can we use Toto Toto also? <laughs> of course you can. Yeah. Okay. But the most important thing is you must use this. I mean, you must write NS, meaning the number of S is equal to 36. So here we have S equal to well, you have to state at least one or two or three. Well, I've uh, listed out a bit more just to have an idea that we have one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, and one, six. And then it continues to two, one, two, 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 three, and until two, six, and then three, one, until we have until six, six. So this should give you an idea that there are 36 altogether. So this is important that you must write NS equals to 36. So when Calvin mentioned that you need to list out, yeah, uh, that's what you should do because you need to identify what are the sample space. The S stand for the sample space. Yeah. So uh, one reason why um, normal, normally your subjects, yeah, every subject it has a tutorial is to ensure that students are aware to how to write the answer in order to get uh, full marks. Lah. I mean, to get as much marks as possible. So just to remind everyone by listing all the elements of the sample space, uh, you can use the dot, dot, dot to indicate that it continues until 6.6. Six. Uh, remember to write NS equals to 36. So this is required to be written because there is marks allocated to it as well. Okay. Now, the first condition is A, uh, the sum of the two dice is three. So just have a look at the ones that have been listed. You can see one example is the one and two. The sum is three. Same thing like two, one. When you add them to, yeah, this is the first dice, this is the second dice. When you add them, it's equal to three. So this is the condition that is set. So listing them down, you have only two numbers, which is one, two, and two, one. So this indicates to us the NA is equal to two, which you can write it in the form of probability of A where we know A is the sum of two dice is three, and it's two over 36, which is the total of the sample space. Um, you can leave your answer like this. Uh, there's no penalty to it, but we can simplify it to an even simpler form because 36 can be divided by the value of two. So it would be best if you leave your answer just like the the suggested answer at the top here, it's one over 18 by simplifying it to get one over 18. So like I said, if you leave your answer like this, it's still accepted, but of course it's still possible to simplify it to become one over 18. Yeah, that's the final answer basically. Any question, class? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, no. Uh, do we have to uh, write the let? A equals sum of two dice is three. 
Mm, yes. Okay, every question need to write that. Yeah, because um, in the question, it didn't state what is A, isn't it? So if you want to use it, uh, rather than writing P in brackets, sum of two dice is three, it would be easier if you write, you know, equal it to A. So some sort like a legend. Yeah, but some some answers I see in exam, they don't want to write, they simply write P and then they write the whole thing. Um, like this, huh? They just write P in front and brackets like that is equal to, then they start showing this part. Huh? So instead of write, they didn't use the A, student when they write the answer for me they didn't use the a so it is still accepted rather than using the alphabet but when you use the alphabet to denote certain condition then it will be more organized that is okay right so the next one is um sum of two dice exceed nine so i've listed all of it we have four five again it exceeds does it four five exceeds nine the sum on two dice is i don't think four five four five is it it's a nine but it doesn't exceed same thing like five four five five is accepted four six is accepted uh six four and six six because my understanding of exceed is um, more than nine. Let me just double check. Can you double check on Google? What is the definition of exceed? Okay. More than nine. More than nine, I think. More than nine, is it? So five, four, and then five, four, five cannot. Uh. Yeah, it shouldn't be. Yeah, so this one not accepted because if you google the word exceed it is more than right that's my understanding let me just double check but they're they're missing five six and six five right? mm -hmm. they're missing five six and six five five six five six six five Come. that is missing Hang on. It's still a six. That means we don't have the we change it then. Yeah, we don't have five six. So six five and five six. So it's still six over thirty six, okay? Because five five and six is eleven. Six and five is eleven. So this one is where you need to edit. So I've edited it, the four change it to six and then five five is a ten and uh, that's correct so that's why it's six over 36 and that would give us one over six as the answer okay yeah i'm checking out the word exceed be greater in number or size than um go beyond what is allowed or stipulated by a set limit yeah so it should be a number that surpass yeah so i was like thinking eh, did i do it wrong yeah i did okay so the next one is see the two dices show the same number so that means the first dice and the second dice all must be of the same number so what we have is um all the numbers one one two two three three four four five five and six six and if you count it of course we have six out of 36. so what is important here class is to be able to list out the sample space and from the sample space you can derive the answer okay now for part d um in this case it's different in such that it could be any possible numbers as long as the two dice they the difference between them is more than two so it's quite a lot 
So you can see here, the difference between them is more than two. Did, did I miss on any value? It must be more than two. Huh? If two, it's not acceptable, like three and one, not acceptable. So we have one, four, one, five, one, six, two, five, which is a three. Two, six, four, three, four is three. Eh, three, six is three. All are yeah. showing more by two, isn't it? They are two, one, five. Is it? Another. So the one, five. Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. Did I? No, it's just a typo. It should be 5 1. Yeah, it should be 5 1. Thank you. So it should be 5 1 here. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. And then if you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that would be 12 over 36, which is equal to 1 over 3. Mm. Now, this is just to understand the concept, okay? Do you think this is the kind of question that will come out in the exam? I think no. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, this is just uh, as a practice, okay? Um, there would no, uh, there would not be any question as straightforward as this, yeah? It's more into... Um, asking you to prove whether the probability is that the events are independent or mutually exclusive and then it's more on touching on the conditional probability using the probability tree and of course the contingency table did we finish chapter three yesterday class uh, well. did we finish chapter three yesterday I can't remember. Very bad. Oh, I think I haven't. You haven't finished chapter three, is it? Like. Mm, like still a few things we haven't covered, right? I okay, like moving that. on to Half the next one. question. We haven't finished one. Not yet. Mm, that's all I thought. Okay, so now is the next question, which is given that probability of not A, this is given to you in the question, probability of not A is two over three, probability of B is one over two, and probability of A and B is one over 12. And we want to find out what is the probability of A union B. So given that, from this information that we have here, probability of not A is two over three, then we can gladly say that probability of A is equal to one over three. Agreed? Uh, yeah. yeah, because one minus, right? So this is the value that uh, we have, probability of A. Now we need to use all the information that we have here and even though it's not stated that it is non-mutually exclusive or mutually exclusive, because it has probability of A intersect B, we know it is uh, non-mutually exclusive because there is value to the intersection between A and B. So therefore, in order to find probability of A union B or A or B, we can use the non-mutually exclusive addition rule. So that means I'm using probability of A union B. This is what we need to find out, which is given by this formula, probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersect with B. Yeah, if you recall to the formula that we covered uh, yesterday. And therefore we just simply put the values like probability of A is equal to one over three probability of B is one over two minus with probability of A intersect with B, which is one over 12. So when you put all the values in, you get three over four as the answer. Is that clear? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Now, tutorial uh, question six now. This time it is concerning with, again, we have property of A, two over five, and property of B is one over four. Yeah, two events, the property value are given. And if A and B are independent events, we need to find our property of A and B, property of A and not B, and property of A, not A, and not B. So from here, it's similar to the exercise we did in class. Yeah, um, that means we can identify from property of A is two over three, therefore probability of not A is three over five. If probability of B is one over four, probability of not B is three over four. Yeah, so for a probability of a and b which is uh, if you remember the multiplication rule we simply need to multiply probability of a times the probability of b in order to find uh, the probability of a and b so here it's pretty much simply multiplying probability of a times with probability of b which means two over five times one over four, and that will give us one over 10. Is that clear? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, how about probability of A and pro um, probability of A and not B? Similar to the ones that we had in our lecture yesterday. That means we only need to multiply probability of A times with probability of not B. And of course, we still have probability of A, which is equivalent to two over five. But when we multiply with probability of not B, it means it's multiplied with three over four. So two over five times three over four, you get uh, basically six over 20, which you can simplify to become three over 10. So far, okay, class. Yeah, it's just multiplying the probability values. And of course, um, pretty much straightforward for C. I think I've chosen all the easier questions for you guys to do. Probability of not A and probability of not B is simply multiplying um, the complements of A and B which is three over five times with three over four, and you get nine over 20. And that's it. That's how you solve question six. Did you get the answer? Oh, yeah. 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 No problem, yeah? And the last one is uh, a bit longer. Uh, this is question eight. Um, it's talking about two secretaries and given that the one he hired most recently will be absent on any given day. This is the value of the probability. And the other secretary will be absent on any given day is 0 0.07. The question is asking us, uh, the pro oh, the probability that they will both be absent is 0 0.02. So, Actually, question eight is similar to the question that we did just now. It's just that the question that we did just now, it doesn't specify uh, what is A and what is B, does it? Yeah, it's just giving us values, yeah? But when we do question eight, there is a story to it already, yeah? So the what the question is asking is to find the probability either or both secretaries will be absent on any given day. So for this question, either or both secretaries absent on given day, because it's already given to us the probability values for each of the secretaries. So we can say, we let A event of new hired secretary is absent. 
because this is the one most recently, and B, event of another secretary being absent, and we can deduce it to this information. That means the new secretary, the absenteeism is 0 0.08, whereby the other secretary is 0 0.07, just like what is given in the question, and probability of A and B, that means both of them are absent, is 0 0.02. So for question A, the question is asking either or both secretaries absent on a given day, which means um, we're applying probability of A or B, that means of the two events A or B, and we're applying the addition rule of non mutually exclusive because these question indicate to us that both can happen at the same time. So that's why it is a non mutually exclusive event. Yeah, because there is a value, it's 0 0.02. So in order to answer this, you just have to put the probability of A, which is 0 0.08 probability of B, which is 0 0.07, and minus with probability of A and B, which is 0 0.02. This one we deduct, and therefore we get 0 0.13 as the answer. Did you get the same answer? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, the next one is at least one comes to work on a given day. Now, this is slightly different because of the word at least. So how would we settle it is that because we are, the question is asking to find the probability at least one comes to work on a given day. The only case that, um, you know, because at least one, so it could be A in the office or B in the office or A and B, both of them in the office, it's counted in the probability. So in order to find all that, rather than you add each one of them, it is easier to use the complement method of using the total value one and your minus probability of A and B. And probability of A and B is already given in the question, right? So you only have to deduct 1 minus 0 0.02 and you get 0 0.98. Some of you might have attempted this question by adding each cases like A is in, B is not. And then you calculate each one of them. Yeah, let me show it to you like you counted probability of A and B because this indicates at least one comes to work or it could be A well, and then B. B comes to work and another one is A um, Hang on. Um, one minus because this one is showing not coming to work, right? Probability of A is not showing the value of the probability is um if you read the question yeah is absent isn't it i'm thinking of this uh solution that i've written here whether it's applicable or not to solve it because now uh, i'm ready you just, to... you just draw you just draw a diagram it's easy to easier to yeah see. it's easier rather than using this because if you really focus on the question, yeah, it is absent on any given day. That's the value of it. So I wouldn't recommend uh, using what I've drawn here. Not recommended for this question. Yeah, I agree with you, Calvin. Draw the diagram is much more easier to see the solution. 
Okay, now the last one uh, is to find probability only one comes to work on a given day. Oh, is it this one that I was thinking of? Yeah, only one comes to work on a given day. Uh, only one, A only, or it could only be B only. So in this case, uh, we have 0 0.8 minus 0 0.02 plus with 0. Point, is that correct 0. 0.8 down should be 0. 0.08 yeah minus 0. 0.02 isn't it because if you draw the Venn diagram Because we have 0 0.02 inside. So this is A, this is B. So that would give us 0. Point, mm, 0 0.08 minus 0 0.02, 0 0.06, and 0 0.05. So we only add these two areas because only one came to work. So that's the answer. Is that clear? Uh, my, uh, uh, union minus intersection. Intersection. Oh. That means you for you found out. Sorry, yeah, my handwriting. It's A union B, which we already obtained from here, right? And then you minus with probability of A intersect B. Yeah, that's also applicable because it is zero point one three minus zero point. Zero two, which is the same answer. It's accepted also. Good answer, um, Noel. How did you do it, uh, Farah? Ah, uh, like the one you show lah. Okay. How about you? Or oh, you use zero point zero eight minus zero point zero two, and then plus zero point zero seven minus zero point zero two. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, like that. Yeah, because we only refer to the one that I shared it according to the Venn diagram here. Yeah? You, Calvin, which method did you use? The union minus intersect one. Oh, like this one. Like uh, Noel, is it? Oh, uh, yeah. Mm, okay. So that's an alternative plan for you to identify the solution. Okay? So that's all for today. But of course, it's too early to let you go. Um, We'll have a break. I will find one question for us or several questions for us to try out. We'll have a break first. Let me find that extra question and then we'll do it uh, when we come back from the break. So if it's okay, we come back at 1.45. Is it okay? Okay. Okay. See you guys in a bit.
Did go back, get the heal. So he is well equipped to take this fight again. Lands another tag. This, I mean, it's just a nuisance pushing in through B main here with his Viper utility. Paranoia comes through, swings out. Korea can't find anything. Trades back and forth right now. Let's but... go. I'm not sure if the, the Deagles are still pretty deadly. Oh, oh, I'm showing oh. you exactly as to why trade does come back through. Still very viable for an IP. You have two players alive. Existence being one commits to this right side of the angle, forcing Chihuahua Steve to fight, but now Mixwell takes control. The defuse is coming in at Zeke right there, but it's gonna still be existence for 1v1. He's pulled him off the, the spike. He's got a swing oh! on it! Oh, and clutching it out in the end will be existence. Perfectly Hello, the time welcome back. Even Are you all here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I check on the past here. Have I shared with you the past year exam question? Mm. My thing. In the Google Heaven. Classroom, have enough. So I better do it now. Um, don't. I was looking at the past year just now, and upon checking, there is no question on probability concerning what we have just discussed. Um, uh, what I'm saying is that the question that we have, like what we've discussed in the tutorial just now, uh, is not none of the question that we did just now is us as a format of the final exam. I really thought that I have uploaded it. Let me just upload it now. So that you can have a look at it and then you can see it for yourself. Yeah, I haven't created it even. Oh gosh, this is bad of me. And you can see it for yourself um, what I meant by none that we have discussed is similar. So I would like you, I will show it on the screen also, but let me just upload it first. It doesn't take a long time. I only have three sets.
Okay, you can have a look at it and let me show it in my screen. I guess we can only do more work when we start doing the, how do you say, uh, when we do more chapters, that is. So if you look at uh, April 2020, this is the latest one. I'm not sure whether I can make it bigger. So I'm checking out from the Google Classroom. Better I go to the file rather than use that. Because I can make it bigger here. So if you look at this question, this is the 28th April 2020. Did I discuss any of the questions with you, like the first question here? None? This is a, since the tutorial question also rather similar, I don't want you to do, I mean, if you want to do and practice, you can try out the tutorial from question uh, one to eight, the odd numbers, because we haven't covered the Bayes and conditional yet, or even the contingency. So that's why uh, it's not appropriate for me to ask you to do the question. But um, let's do a review on past year exam question then um, as a part of preparing for your um, test and assignment. It's still a long way off because your test will be on week nine, if I'm not mistaken. But it's good to always be ready. So I just want you all to see. Yeah, this is uh, 28 April 2020. And if you look at it, the past year exam question. Question one is covering. If you see the part A, definitely you can do it. Yeah. If you look at it, the question is asking you to compute the mode and interpret its value. Now, this is a group data. My question is is it a sample or a population? Class. Is it sample. a sample? Yeah, how do you know? Because of the word sample here. So when you calculate the mode, it doesn't really matter if it's a sample, even the interpretation, but when you calculate the standard deviation, you have to be careful about the formula. Yeah, uh, in fact, the same with median and the first quartile. So if you look at this question, which is rather recent one, it's an April 2020 exam paper. It is basically, you know, no graph is required for you to draw because this exam falls during the first MCO actually. Yeah, the first MCO. And that time, uh, because we adapt to the online teaching very fast, so we decided not to give graph yeah, for students to do. But this is MCO number two now. There might be questions um, this time that ask students to draw because later on we'll we'll have a review on the other pass here. Yeah, but you can see this is the latest one, which is exactly a year ago. Yeah, the exam that you're going to do also sometime in April. You can see this question one A is how I would say is a bonus question. Yeah, bonus question because you guys definitely can do all this, yeah? Do you think so? You can find the mode and interpretation. Yes, we did cover that. How do you find the mean and standard deviation, median and first quartile? And this is basically seven plus eight, 15 plus six is 21 marks on chapter two, okay? And then if you look at question B, this is a Poisson question. Yeah, it's a Poisson question. Yeah, uh, this is chapter four, which we haven't done, but perhaps uh, you have covered it 
uh, during your SPM. Do you remember Poison? You learned Poison before? Uh, I remember the name only. <laughs> this one is using, if you recall, yeah, it's using the Lambda. Do you remember? No? I forgot. <laughs> Okay, it's okay. Yeah, you did learn. If you did take at maths, then you did learn it during high school. And um, basically, we'll do, we'll definitely go, going to cover it. So question one, it's always in this type of format. Yeah, they mix uh, chapter two with chapter four to give us four marks. Yeah, for the poison. Then if you look at question number two, uh, this is the part where the topic that we're learning now, which is the probability chapter. Yeah, however, um, the problem is this question is concerning with uh, Bayes and uh, conditional probability. Have I covered it with you guys or not? I'm not so sure. Did I cover? Or can you do this question already? Oh, yeah, let me. Do you remember if I covered Bayes and conditional with you guys? I can't remember. Oh my gosh, I'm really bad. Because I had class yesterday after your class, so I totally forgotten you. Have I covered Bayes with you? Um, I think not yet. I think yeah, because, because we, if we have covered it yesterday, because I've chosen the tutorial question for you guys yesterday, I would have chosen this question, uh, this type of question for you to do today tutorial. So that's why when I look at our tutorial today, I said, what's up? I said, I, how come it's only four questions and very short questions or more? I must be in a very good mood yesterday. Anyway, since we haven't covered, that means this one you still can't do. So in chapter three, this question two is contributing to your to our reference to chapter chapter three but you guys still can't do and the question that we did just now if i check all throughout uh, this past year yeah like this question is concerning with the uh, binomial uh yeah Tested for admission, failed the test. Ten percent. This is the probability value, zero point zero, zero point one, and then we have n is twelve. This is binomial, which chapter four, and this question is a normal distribution again, chapter four, and then question three here. All here are concerning with the hypothesis testing. Um, well, we have confidence interval. You can see 95 confidence interval. And then we have the level of significance. This is the hypothesis testing. And same thing with this one also, 5% level of significance. So this would be chapter five, yeah, mainly chapter five. And for question four, it would be product moment correlation coefficient. This is chapter six, yeah. All this will be chapter six. And down here goes back to chapter on probability again. This is chapter three, but again, we haven't covered because this is about the arrangement which we're going to do next week. Yeah. So as you can see, the template of the question, uh, the exercise or the tutorial we did just now will not come out in the finals as, you, as what you see here. I mean, this is the latest template, okay? Are you, are you, do you understand what I'm saying, everyone? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's look at another pass year. The latest one, 3rd February. This is before the MCO. Yeah, this is before the MCO. And you can see uh, this is 3rd February 2020. Just a review to what you should expect in your final exam. So it's good to expose yourself to the past year, because again, I would like to remind to everyone, your past year format is this, so it's good that you're exposed to it. And also the assignment and the test would be similar to this format as well. But I would have to say, uh, my assignment is a bit 
um, you need to spend time on it, of course. It's not that difficult, but you need to spend time on it. Yeah, so let's look at uh, question number one. Again, this is um, 3rd February, 2020. Well, 3rd February is exactly a year from today. And look at the question, it's almost the same, isn't it? But this time, notice that, construct a cumulative frequency distribution table and draw a lesson or gift. That means before the MCO, students were still required to draw the or gift. So this is now the second MCO and it's not as strict as the first, we are allowed to go to the shops and buy stationeries, right? The only thing not open are the pubs, again. <laughs> so expect that, expect the graph to be asked. Now remember, this is a third February 2020 exam paper. And then you should know from the OGIF how you get the quartile division, meaning you must get the Q1 and the Q3, the lower quartile and upper quartile from the OGIF. And then, of course, the percentage, calculate the mean and standard deviation. And as you can see, um, yeah, as you can see, the marks allocated for this particular question is somewhat 18 marks, if I'm not mistaken, 18 marks for question chapter two. And then the, in question one, this question is concerning probability tree again, we haven't covered, have we covered probability tree diagram? We might have, so you could answer this question. Have we done probability tree? Have I done probability tree yesterday? I think I have. Yeah. Yeah, so can we, maybe we can do this question later on if we still got time, okay? So this is an area um, on chapter three that we're covering now, yeah? So if you look at question number two, uh -huh, this is a normal distribution, chapter four. Uh, this is chapter four also because exactly two heads, this is a binomial question. Yeah. And then this is a Poisson question. Question three, again, it's a normally distributed. Um, that surprised me because um, two questions on normal, because we have a normal question here. And down here also a normal question. It's quite odd that the question asks, oh, because there, this is a different area. It has 200 samples. So it's slightly different from what we have done earlier, uh, what the question asks you here, because this question is a very straightforward normal uh, distribution question. But if you look at down here, this question is concerning with 200 samples, and therefore you have to do an approximation to the value. Yeah, we have to do a normal approximation, which I'm going to cover in chapter four. And then here is confidence interval, still confidence interval. And this is level of significance. So this is hypothesis testing, chapter five. And then if you look at question four, yeah, this is again chapter three, but we haven't covered it because it's about arrangement. Yeah, uh, how many ways can you select? Yeah, so it's an arrangement. And the last question here is chapter seven, concerning with correlation and uh, correlation and regression analysis. Yeah, correlation and regression. Yeah, and then uh, the last one is the 6th September 2019 question. So 6 September 2019, uh, you can see question one. Uh, we still 
ask for the mean and standard deviation, but look here, we are to construct a histogram. You have to draw a histogram to the question. Yeah, as given. Compute the mean and standard deviation and find the third quartile. time. Okay, and then we have find the number of ways which five letters can be selected from the word vertical. Now, this one is still chapter on probability. This is chapter three, but we haven't covered it as well. Um, this question, five medicals, it's a poison, I think, this one. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one thing, you see, this question, it doesn't state the word poison, but how do we know it's a poison question because of the word average? Yeah, normally poison, in order to, to solve the question, you only need one information, which is the value of the average, and that is your lambda, which you're going to use it to solve as a poison question. And then continue on this question here is concerning with uh, probability. Hang on. But it's quite big package of 16. Huh? This one is a binomial. Yes, it says less than two, three or four defective. But I'm a bit, I'm a bit concerned about this question as a binomial question, chapter four, because um, if you look at the value of the probability, if you look at the value of the probability, it is very, very small, 0 0.06. And the value here is 16. So if our n is 6, if our n is 16, and then you times with 0 0.06, hmm, the value is still okay, acceptable as a, Hmm. 16, still acceptable as a binomial question. But I'm concerned about the value of the probability, which is quite small, 0 0.06. Yeah. Okay, then the next one, the question is a normally distributed question. Yeah. Um, chapter four. And then again, we have the confidence interval. Same thing, confidence interval and the level of significant hypothesis testing. And here also level of significant hypothesis testing. So question three is normally a killer question for a lot of students because um, it's new. But if you really understand the concept when we go through the chapter, it should be no problem. Yeah. And then question four, okay, this is concerning with probability. Um, but of course, this one, you need to draw the probability tree diagram. And it's, it's given, yeah, it's conditional probability. So it's concerning with Bayes theorem. Yeah. And then uh, the last part is again, the correlation see correlation, Spearman, and regression. So those are the areas in question B. Is there any more question? So that is the highlight of your past year exam question. Yeah, if you look at it, can give me 100% passing radar from this group. Yes, definitely can. Yeah, so it's not difficult. As long as you know the method of it, it should be no problem. Okay, so we still have time. Isn't it? We still have time. So, which question was that just now? Yeah, is it this one? I said we can do the question. Or is it this? Which one? Uh, three. Question three. 
Probability three. Yeah, probability three. Now I forgot where it is. Is it this one? No, not this one. Not this one. This one, is it? No. Or this one, yeah? Yeah, that one. This one. So let's try it out. Can you try and do it first? And then uh, we'll discuss it later on. Yeah? Just a rough work. And we discuss this. we'll discuss it after you try it out first. <laughs> All right? So I give you about 10 minutes, okay? Uh, three questions. Uh, yeah, just these three questions. Okay. All right? Okay. The next example, I thought I recorded, and a dog um, there is asking is so, therefore, zero in the event so that life is you should. And okay, but you can simply not show you one okay. and all listed here. Yeah, you see, thing a month replaced would be.
Hello, are you done with the question? Yeah. Let's discuss it. It's done. It is. Okay. Right. Um, it's quite straightforward, don't you think? Um, the probability tree, I hope you have drawn it. And the thing is, with this question, it's without replacement. So um, I try to do it with the little space that I have here. And I'm going to try to draw it using my, well, my mouse. <laughs> Hopefully, it's okay. So remember, it's a sock fan wanted to take two balls. And just to draw the probability tree, we have green balls and blue balls. And then since sock fan want to take two balls, we have green and blue. Green and blue. So the probability value for each, what is the probability value here? The first branch uh, here would be 11 out of 20. Yeah, this one should be 11 out of 20. And that's the first information given to us, okay? So if that is 11 over 20, down here would be 9 over 20. Now, because it's without replacement, the number of the green balls as indicated here would be reduced. Yeah. So that means here would be 10 over 19. And then down here would be no change to the blue ball. So it would be 9 over 19. Whereas on this branch, we have a blue ball taken. So the green ball is not disturbed. So we have Nine, eleven over 19 and since here the blue ball has been taken it would be 8 over 19 yeah so any question did you get the same uh, probability tree yeah. yeah yeah the marks is very small right? it's only three marks yeah for the diploma students the marks are even bigger it's about six marks when they have drawn this probability tree. But for degree level, the marks is a bit smaller. Um, then I hope you have calculated number two and number three, of which can you uh, double check? Because um, I got 281 over 380. Did you get the same answer? Huh? Wrong. Huh? You didn't get the same answer. None. And this one for the third one, it is 91 over 190. Did you get the same? No. Okay. Uh, how did you do the second one? Let me get a different colored ink. Uh, this one better. Can it be C? Yes, it's C. Um, for me, for this question, it says that at least one ball is blue. So if it's one ball is blue, that means I'm taking this combination, this combination, and this combination and all I add. So that means uh, first one would be 11 over 20 times 9 over 19. And then plus with 9 over 20 times 11 over 19. Plus with 9 over 20 times 8 over 19. Or a very easy way, let me try and write it, is 1 minus in brackets. 11 over 20 times 10 over 19. Can you see it? My handwriting is a bit bad. Yeah, so your answer wrong. Is it my calculation wrong? My value? Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, it must be because I was rushing. But this is the met this is the method. Uh, it is one minus. Let me just calculate it. I might have accidentally pressed some parts of it. Is it instead of multiplying it? I go and press it as adding it. I mean, I go and plus it. Mm. So the answer is, yeah, I think I press it wrongly. It is 27 over 38. Did you get the same then? Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, Miss, how to yeah. get the green one? The 11 out of 20 times. The other one, the right. This oh. one? Oh, because... Because the question asks, at least one ball, one ball is blue. So if the question asks, at least one ball is blue, that means we are taking green and blue. That means one is blue. Blue and green, this branch, you can see my pointer here, is indicating one is blue. And blue and blue is at least one is blue is also accepted. So the only value not counted is the one here, which is, oh, better get the yellow one. It's this one. Whereas the rest of the combination is with the blue. So I'm using the complement method, which is the value one minus this to give me 27 over 38. So I know why my answer was incorrect just now, because when I was doing the calculation, when I was using my calculator, I accidentally pressed a plus instead of multiplying them. So that's why my value is a bit weird. Yeah, so the next one, the second one, did you get 91 over 190 or did I use? Yeah, I think I would get a different answer also because I'm using instead of multiplying, instead of multiplying, I use addition. So it's basically uh, the second one here, the third one actually, is just doing G, G, that is green and green, or blue and blue. So it's 11 over 20. Let me double check it again. Uh, times with 10 over 19. That would give 11 over 38. And then I would have to plus the blue, blue, which is 9 over 20 times with 8 over 19. That is 18 over 95. Now that's correct. So that one have to plus with 11 over 38. Oh, this one is correct, yeah? 91 over 190. Did you get the same class? Oh, yeah. Hey, too big, too big, too big. Did you get the same? Yeah? Kelvin? Kelvin. Uh, yes, the different one. I don't. You didn't get the same answer. This one is correct because you need to calculate G and G, uh, blue and blue. Uh, you were saying, um, Sarah. Oh, nothing. Uh, yeah, nothing. Did you get the same answer? Uh, Noel, did you get 91 over 190? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Kelvin, did you get the same? Oh, no, I got, I make a mistake. Oh, I see. Yeah, just like I did a mistake on the ten, the the second question. Yeah, so you see, the marks is rather small. Yeah, um, I mean, for diploma, it's about um four marks, three marks to four marks. Here, you are only given two marks to to answer this. So this is an example of probability question. 
you notice or not the question that we did for the tutorial today it's not similar to the one that we have in the finals all right that's what i want you guys to see for today okay okay so for next week after Chinese New Year, you have a good fun time during Chinese New Year. But remember to come back for my class on Monday. Uh, we're going to finish up the chapter three. And yeah, and we'll do more, more questions then by then. All right. So I think that's all for today. Thank you. Okay, miss. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Miss. Thank you. Bye-bye.